Chapter 7, The Lycanthropes Castle. The canals running through the city, this city, lead to a giant castle. A once beautiful architectural legacy now transformed into the lair of the greater fiend, Wolf. Wolf's iron fist reigns over an army of werewolves. He is a berserker, as bloodthirsty as a beast, and his never-ending hunger for battle has led him to prepare a fitting arena for a duel to the death with the world's most powerful ninja. So we're gonna fight him in this chapter? Yep, I can smell it coming. And this game, the, the this chapter immediately picks us up where chapter 6 has ended, and we are going to resume where we left off, it seems. So, now we need to find ourselves a way out of here, but where can we go? So, looks like with the falling of the debris that's leading towards that bathhouse right there, I think some of the debris from the bathhouse is going to fall, and that's going to create a way for us to use the flying bird flip to get all the way to the top, it seems. Yep, and I knew I was right, so... Let's go ahead and run on the water here to where we can actually get over here. And we can grab this and we can be prepared to jump our way up this way. So, hey everybody, it's Double RPG here and welcome back to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on the PlayStation 3. In today's episode, we are going to resume where we left off and we'll see how far along we get with Chapter 7. And while we're getting through Chapter 7, I have a little bit of a rant and per and about a... Uh, particular series in general, but I'll get on to that as we get on with this episode, as we get this episode going. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on with this episode that's already in progress, and we're going to use the flying bird flip ability to jump all the way up here, so that way we can actually come this way, and we can make our way to the Muramasa statue, which is right over there, and we need to upgrade another one of our weapons, so I think we'll do that very shortly as we get over there, and indeed we will. So how's everybody doing today? I hope you all are having a very nice day. And I hope some of you are playing Ninja Gaiden 3 on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, which I am, and I'm definitely enjoying the game to death. So if you have not picked that game up yet, then why are you listening to me? So go and pick it up now. And I know some of you might not be appreciative of the streamlined approach that the game goes for, but that's only if you're playing Ninja Gaiden 3 on the hero mode, where it's more intact for the casual crowd. If you want Ninja Gaiden 3 to play like the other Ninja Gaiden games, then play on the harder difficulties. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. And yeah, that's what I've been playing the games on, and at least I am getting in quite of a challenge, where the overall impression is still kept intact, to where... Team Ninja still respects the hardcore crowd of the franchise, to where they want a challenge. But, I cannot say the same about Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, unfortunately. Because, I tried out Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City last week, I did not buy it, but at least I tried it out. And all I can say is, ugh. Seriously, Capcom, you decided to make Resident Evil go in this direction with a spin-off title? No, we don't want that kind of gameplay in a Resident Evil game, because with Resident Evil, or with a survival horror game, you want to feel scared, you want to feel like you're conserving ammo, and you want to feel like you're solving puzzles, and you want to try your best to survive in a situation where there's a bunch of undead monsters. That's what survival horror is all about. Not, not in the direction where it's going right now to where you're having it more action-oriented like Resident Evil 5, and what you did with Operation Raccoon City, evidently. Oh, gosh. And, and yeah, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City is definitely not worth the purchase and definitely is not where the series needs to go at this moment. But the, even to add more fuel to the fire, it seems that the series producer, uh, Masachika Kawata, has actually said something different about where the series needs to go. Or he is completely indifferent to what the fans think and he believes that the series needs to go for more of the opposite approach. And this is from an article that I read that's on GameSpot that they obtained from Gamma Sutra, where he had an official interview with them, and he said that the Resident Evil franchise needs to be more action-oriented in terms of the main series titles. Whereas Resident Evil 4 started that tradition, even though I really liked that game, because even though it was action, it still maintained the fact that you were actually playing a survival horror type of game. Resident Evil 5, on the other hand, I cannot say the same thing because it was mostly the equivalent of a Michael Bay film where everything was just mostly eye candy. And with Resident Evil 6, Masachika Kawata believes that it needs to go up a step further in terms of the action. Wait, wait, wait. What? No! Resident Evil games are not supposed to be like that! With survival horror games, 
that a, tradi a tradition that the Resident Evil series has started, you're expected to do all sorts of things to what made the original games on the PlayStation and whatever game, you know, what other games came within that time frame to where they still maintain the traditional basics of what survival horror is all about. You're not supposed to make people focus on the action. You're supposed to make them focus on solving puzzles and conserving ammo and trying to survive in the most deadliest of situations. That's what survival horror is all about. And that's what Resident Evil is all about, believe it or not. It's not supposed to be about action. I mean, who in their right mind, I mean, who in their mind said that the Resident Evil series needs to be more about action, not survival horror? I mean, sure, Resident Evil 4, I give it the benefit of the doubt that it actually still maintained the survival horror elements, but at least it didn't try to, or the basics of what made a Resident Evil game so great, but at least it didn't try to alienate, at least Shinji Mikami did not try to alienate the fans with the direction that he decided to take Resident Evil 4 in, at least he was still trying to keep traditional basics in the franchise and not make everything based on eye candy. My gosh, seriously though, it's just who in their right mind came up with this idea to where the series needs to go for that. Just go for Hey! Dude, dude, I was about to get 100 hits. Dude, you guys suck. But, yeah, I think that Masachika Kawata, what he's saying is just a complete joke. Because that's the reason why I feel that some Japanese developed games are getting their butts handed to them. It's because they're trying to get a piece of the American pie to where they want to capitalize on a big success, kind of like... Call of Duty, even though I don't consider it a success, I consider it overrated, but I just, I don't feel the same way with, you know, how the series is, needs to be treated from this point on. It doesn't need to be action-oriented. As long as you maintain the, the tradition of what survival horror is supposed to be about, then that's fine. Why didn't you make it like Resident Evil 4, where there was emphasis of survival horror in the gameplay? Why do you need, why do you believe that the series needs to go up further in terms of of the action and as I've been stating that's the reason why Japanese developers seem to be getting their butts chewed or you know get their butts handed to them is because they want to try to capitalize on the success that Western developers or Western games kind of like Call of Duty and Halo and Gears of War are actually doing more more uh, are actually doing very well in terms of the sales numbers and reviews figures is because they want to try to make their games you know, action-oriented like them. But the thing is that I really don't agree on with what they're doing is is taking that approach. I mean, that's the reason why Resident Evil was created in the first place, because it became different. It tried to define itself for what it what it is as of to this day. I mean, you don't need to make the series action-oriented in the long run. You need to maintain tradition with what makes Resident Evil Resident Evil. Because with Op Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, it does not feel like an RE game whatsoever. It feels like a poor man's version of SOCOM. It's... it's sad. I do not recommend people to play it. I do not recommend them to buy it. It's... It's just abysmal. And, and if you... and if you really did pick it up, then I feel sorry for you. But if any of you did not pick it up, then at least you're making the right choice. So, yeah... I mean, this idea where, where companies like Capcom and Square Enix are trying to capitalize on Activision's success with Call of Duty and trying to make their games have an emphasis of Call of Duty in them? Yeah, <laughs> I don't even see that working out. That completely alienates what the series has defined itself to be. It's not... it, it doesn't make the series go forward. It actually alienates the franchise as a whole. And that's the reason why I felt that, you know, people like Shinji Mikami and Hideki Kamiya, why they left Capcom, and why Keiji Inafune left Capcom, was because of how ridiculous with what Capcom is trying to do. How they're trying to bring the franchise into a new direction to completely alienate what made them successful in the first place. But I wonder if I can say the same about Devil May Cry, because even though that's... Even even though things look kind of different in terms of the visual style, in terms of what Dante looks like, but at least they are keeping the overall impression intact to where, you know, you're actually playing a hack and slash game, not something that's supposed to be, you know, completely in the vein of what Call of Duty is about. Seriously! 
I don't want to see Resident Evil 6 end up taking the Call of Duty approach. I want to see it go back to the traditional roots. Because if if Capcom is still insistent on making the game feel like Call of Duty, like when Final Fantasy 13 fell because it tried to act like Call of Duty, I think people are not going to be that very receptive. And I think fans are going to stray away from the franchise even more. And this is coming from somebody who's a big Resident Evil fan. And I was a big Final Fantasy fan too, but now with what everybody is doing in terms of in terms of what they're doing and trying to make their games different from what past entries define themselves to mean to make them successful, it makes me question whether or not if, you know, if this video game world is actually on the verge of another collapse because of everybody trying to do the exact same thing. Kind of like what happened back during the days of the first video game crash where games were carbon copies of each other and they didn't try to bring their own innovations to the table! Ugh, God. So yeah, if RE6 is going for this approach, then I'm not gonna buy it. Because I have because even looking at the trailer, I had high hopes that it would try to go back for the traditional survival horrors because zombies were in the game. But when you're in a when an interview and saying that the game needs to be more action approach and be like Call of Duty, no! You don't want that! Ugh, oh, gosh. So yeah. I'm not going to pick up RE6 if it's still going to go for that approach. I mean, well, actually, I might because I'm still a fan of the franchise, but hopefully it will redeem the bad the bad qualities with what made RE6 or RE5 what it is. That's the only thing I hope for. But if not, then I think you have completely pissed off your fans even more. I think you pretty much completely pissed them off with Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City to begin with. And... And, and even look at Square Enix. They're really pissing off fans because of how bad Final Fantasy XIII turned out to be. Because of it trying to take some inspirations in the Call of Duty franchise in terms of the action. You don't need to do that. Ugh, God. But yeah, I, I it's just that when I heard that interview and after experiencing Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City in it to its full extent... I was not a very happy camper, and a lot of us weren't even that happy too. So, if if <laughs> Capcom, if you're still if you're still gonna go for this approach, then I think you are gonna completely make fans come after you and get your heads put on pikes and whatever. But anyway, enough of my ranting. Uh, one. A uh, thing I should have been talking about a few minutes ago, or about a minute ago, is one of the newest weapons that we actually picked up. This is the Kusari Yama. This is a new weapon in the Ninja Gaiden franchise, which we have not even gotten our hands on, believe it or not. So, we actually have the sickle with the ball, or the chain with the metal ball at the end. I know that sickles is actually supposed to cut down enemies, but I think the metal or iron ball that's stuck at the other end of the chain, I think that's actually used to break break bones off of like you know opponents or whatever if they were thrown at enemies but I could be mistaken but I think that's what the direction of what the weapon is supposed to go for but you know finally a worthy adversary has entered my castle Excellent. He shall be given a most fitting welcome. Oh, he certainly did make the Aqua Capital a very grim place indeed, so... Anyway, since we're here at this castle, we need to make sure we make our way to where Wolf is located. And I don't think he's located this way, but I think there are some things that we can actually get if we come towards this direction. I think this is another upgrade shop to where we can actually increase our weapon to one of our weapons to one level, and indeed it is. And I think we'll go ahead and we'll upgrade the Kusari Gama towards one more level. 
and let's see what it looks like when it's upgraded to level 2. Oh, now that even looks more exciting. So I think we will stick with that for right now. Okay, so we stopped here at Muramasa Shop again. So that's two weapons that we've upgraded in this chapter. That's very good. And I think we actually want to come up here because I think there's actually something that we can learn about before we have to go inside the castle again. Or something that we can get, and there is a treasure chest. And with some essence, is that the only thing we're supposed to get? If that is, then... Oh, yeah, I am totally disappointed. Oh, what the hell. Okay, so we need to go inside the castle now. So let's go ahead and save our progress here. And let's go inside, and we'll give the lycanthropes a very warm welcome. And that was the name of those enemies. Oh, wait a minute, the Lesser Fiends. An enemy which we have not seen since the previous Ninja Gaiden series good to see them again. Oh, that was a nice move. Oh, wait a minute. I, I was trying to do... I don't think you... Actually, with this enemy... I mean, with this weapon, I don't think you can do the... I don't think you can do the Izuna drop unless there is some way you can do it, but I don't think you can actually do it with this weapon, believe it or not. So, there is actually a weapon where we can actually use that ability. But at least you actually get to do a lot of cool things like try to use the big ball to strike your enemies with and to use the sickle to cut them down. So that's all cool, right? And there are some darker ones too. So that's actually very deadly. <laughs> cool, we can actually use the obliteration technique on these guys. Or unless we're actually supposed to use the... Uh... Nope. Well, unless we were supposed to use the the technique to how we can do the Azuna drop in a different way, but I highly doubt it. Oh, who cares? Let's just let's just pound him like we usually do. Do it now! Ah! You're almost done with this level, so you might as well just continue with doing what you do best, right? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, we should be getting closer to the gate. And I think the gate is just located just around the bend here. Yes, it is. And once we get up close to the gate, I think we'll go ahead and we'll close off this episode. Since we made a whole lot of progress today. And this is like the fourth take of doing this video. Because last uh, last couple times I tried to do this video, or the last few times, the first time, the microphone was not even recognized on in Audacity. And the second and third time when I did it, I was doing fine, but the game... Uh, all of a sudden, I disconnected from the game because I realized that it was connected to the PlayStation Network. So, yeah. Doing this a fourth time, at least it's better. I thought third time was the charm, but evidently that is not the case when trying to do this video. I feel totally disappointed. And you know what? I think I'm going to need the bow and arrows to help me out here. Since we have those fiends that are in the sky. Uh, I think so. And let's just continue to just give him a good, happy welcome to the ball and sickle. I, I got a ball of steel and a sickle made of platinum. <laughs> or do I, is it the ball of iron and the sickle made of steel? Probably is. I would, I would make a Duke Nukem reference saying I got balls of steel, but at least, you know, this is, this is as good as we're going to get. Let's go ahead and take care of that other one. Okay, is that all of them? I hope that's all of them. And I think that was. And cool, I just did an ultimate guidance right in front of you. How nice. Alright guys, since we have made it this far, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop things right here. So next time on Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on the PlayStation 3, we're going to resume where we left off and we will finish up Chapter 8 seven in its entirety so anyway gamers if you have not done so already be sure to follow me on facebook and twitter with the links in the description and if you like what you saw then be sure to rate this video subscribe to my channel and leave comments below to let me know what you thought of this episode anyway gamers take care of yourselves and i shall see you on the next one thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys then